Hello everyone, and this is the first episode of what I hope will be quite an interesting new series called the Cardboard Engine Shed. Now I do have a cardboard engine shed, and if I have a photo of it, I'll put it on the screen right now. But basically, what this series will be is episodes, I don't know how many, but just episodes about building engines, what cardboard engines, building cardboard engines, maintaining them, rebuilding them, restoring them, making new parts, making even new engines. So it will basically go through everything that I do to build my engines and run them and all that. So uh, it will be for my smaller 2 inch gauge engines and I'll put a video up, video of it on the screen at the moment. And that is my new kind of track system because the engines just have discs for wheels. So the way to make them run on track is essentially the same way Tomy slash Trackmaster slash Wooden Railway Track works. Where the wheels run in grooves in the rails, that's basically how it works. But anyway, for the first episode... I will be start. I'll be trying to build an LMS Fowler dock tank, an 06 locomotive with external Walsh's valve gear. There's a picture on your screen at the moment, and I wanted to build it one just because it's a simple engine to show how to build, and two, I quite like the design and I'd like more. I'd like to build more LMS engines. So first off, we need to start with the wheels. After you've found the diameter of the wheel you'd like to make for, the, for your engine, I would recommend using a compass because it means the wheel will be perfectly round and also you'll be able to find the uh, perfect centre without any extra effort. Once you've drawn the circles for your wheels, I would recommend for smaller engines, an engine of this size, the wheels could probably use one or two discs per wheel, but for a bigger engine like uh, an A3 or a Hall class or something al along those lines, I'd recommend using three discs for each wheel, just because it makes it a bit more secure. Once all the wheel discs have been cut, um, however many you want for each wheel, for this engine I'm going to try and use two discs for each wheel. If you want to change that, that's alright, but for this engine it's just going to be two discs per wheel. So you just want to put the discs together. Once all the discs have been uh, stuck together, next you want to move on to making the markings for the crank pins. As you can see, I just use a pen or a permanent marker. That is where the crank pin will be, so I'll cut a hole for that in a minute. But uh, what you just want to do is measure the distance from that central hole to the edge of the uh, circle there and do it on every wheel. Then once you've done that, you just want to use some kind of sharp or pointy object. And I usually use the end of a kebab stick, because they're nice and pointy, and just poke a hole through the, where the uh, circle is. Then once you've made the holes for the crank pins, you just want to decide on the length of the crank pins, whatever that may be. Once you've glued the crank pins into the wheels, you just want to cut a little bit off, off a straw, a paper or plastic straw. I use paper because, of course, uh, it's biodegradable and people aren't selling plastic straws just so to be more environmentally friendly. But paper straws work just as well, so it doesn't really matter what type you use. All you want to do is, I'll just demonstrate... You just want to glue it at the bottom of the crank pin. You just want to glue it just there to stop the connecting rod fouling on the centre of the axle, on the centre of the wheel, once we get round to fitting the axle. Then once you've done that to all of the wheels, what you want to do is, because of course I used a compass, so the hole doesn't actually go all the way through. It may look like it, but it doesn't go all the way through. So you just want to use, again, the point of a kebab stick or something, and just poke it through the hole. And if you used a compass, if you didn't, then you'd want to find the centre of the wheel, poke it through and make sure the wheel spins perfectly, or close to perfectly. Once you've decided on the length of the axles, you next want to decide on the length of the bearings. Now this is where straws come in handy. It kind of depends on what gauge you want. And to do that, before you glue the wheels onto the axle, you want to get a bit piece of straw... Uh, as I said, paper or plastic, and make sure it fits on the axle with a little bit of clearance so it doesn't rub against the wheel. And then simply what you want to do is take one wheel off, then glue the other one on, put the bearing on, then put the other wheel on and glue that on. Next is probably one of the most difficult tasks, which is quartering the wheels and getting them right. As you can see, because I used the compass, the wheel is quite round. Um, but anyway, what you want to do, it's kind of confusing, but as you can see, this the crank, the crank pin is pointing to the left, as you can see. And if you keep that to the left, then what you want to do is get the other wheel with the crank pin pointing down. 
And of course, you want to put the bearing on first. And then, with that crank pin still pointing in that direction, you want to get this wheel with the crank pin pointing down, like so. Just make sure that it's as precise as you can get it. I hope that all made sense, but you just want to get it as precise as possible. Ooh, yeah, I don't really have a good system for doing this. But you want to get it as precise as possible. So that, that crank pin's pointing in one direction, and the other one's pointing another. But then, of course, you want to put glue on, and then just glue it so that you see that what that crank pin's pointing down, and that one's pointing in either left or right. And then, if you get that right, the rest of the engine should work quite well. Now, once you've made all the wheels, you want to move on to the frames slash chassis. Once you've decided on the length of the frames, these little lines just represent where the axles will sit. And then simply what I do is I get a kebab stick that runs the entire length of the chassis and then glue it at where I want the axles to sit so that it will keep them all straight. And then you just want to cut little squares where the markers were, just so you know where the axles will sit. Once you have duplicated the uh, one side of the frames, as you can see there's this cardboard plate in the middle and as you can see it rests on that kebab stick so it just provides means the chassis is much stronger it just rests on that kebab stick there and runs almost the whole length of the chassis you need to make sure all of the uh, holes for the axles are perfectly in line which they are I have checked then now you just want to put a dot of glue there and in there and then put the axle on it without getting any glue on the wheels and just keep it on the straw so that it doesn't jam anything and then you just do it for the all the other wheels on the model then once you've done that to all the wheels you should have a nice rolling chassis and I must say this one does roll quite well as you can see nice rolling chassis and now we will move straight on to the connecting rods I'm not sure if this strategy works every time, but to, in order to get the right length for the connecting rods, you want to get the uh, kebab stick and make sure that it perfectly lines up with the centre of the wheel, where the axles are poking out, and that means they should fit nicely onto the uh, crank pins. For the connecting rods, all you want to do is get a small piece of a straw and then put a little dot of glue on the end of the kebab stick, like so, and then just glue that on and now this isn't the best way of doing it and it's hard to do on camera you just want to encase the straw carefully in glue like that you can wipe it down once it's cooled down so you don't burn your fingers you can try and wipe it down but once it's painted it does look all right and you just want to do that because otherwise the straw might get torn off and yep, like I said, you can neaten it up a bit, but I'm just going to do this quickly. And then you want to do that on both ends of this connecting rod and all the others. Then you just want to put the connecting rods on the crank pins. And as you can see, they're literally just held on with little squares of cardboard. You just need to be careful not to get any glue on the crank pins. And as you can see, do a quick test run. And I'm quite amazed because I've actually managed to do it first try. So... That's a good sign. And then once you've done that, um, obviously test run it, make modifications if you want. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I won't show you how to make the valve gear because it can get quite complicated and a lot of it is extremely similar to how the connecting rods are made. So at least now, if you if you want to, you can make an engine that just has external connecting rods but internal valve gear, meaning it's very simple to make. So uh, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.